Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Nikki Lopez. Um, I, I am an, um, an artist, a social practitioner, and founder of What's Your Elephant, a movement that uses the arts to um, address anything unspoken. And I have the pleasure of working with the LA Lee YMCA on this new series called The Art of Justice, Art Making Workshop and Community Dialogue. Um, we are going to be doing a series. Tonight is the kickoff for that series. We're going to be focusing on four lenses of social justice. We're going to, and so how the format of the, the series will go is we'll have one day, um, which will be on a Thursday evening like tonight, where we'll have a couple of um, either at least one artist who's going to be leading the art making workshop doing different types of art. We're going to have a special guest. And we're gonna talk about one of the focuses of social justice. And then we're gonna create some art and have a community dialogue. Um, the following would be another day where we're gonna have a virtual showcase where if you've made a project within the, the workshop, you're invited to email us or you know of that photo. And we're gonna be um, having some other artwork as well as a featured artist and doing a, vir a virtual showcase. And so this series is gonna be from now up until um, January uh, 2022, where we'll have um, we'll have a culminating exhibition. Uh, this work is supported by a fund by Community Foundation of Broward, who is supporting this work. And so I'm really excited to be here. And I'm, we're going to do a, a quick introduction, and we'll get everybody started. So I'm going to pass the baton to uh, Gabe to introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Gabe Ochoa. I have the pleasure to work for the YMCA. Right behind me is the new building um, that is almost uh, uh, completed. We're very close of completion. And this is a project that the Community Foundation of Broward, the Art of Community Grant, is funding. And I have the pleasure to be in the company of Alana and Sue and everyone that is joining tonight to really go through this journey of how to use arts and really infuse it into the social justice. And they will walk us through the process. So welcome everyone. Hi, welcome to tonight's workshop. My name is Alana DaCosta and we're gonna be having some fun today talking about access and equity and how we can use art and expressive art as a vehicle to really create some thought provoking dialogue around the lenses of access and other lenses in the other workshops that we'll share with you. So I welcome you tonight. I look forward to creating with you tonight and having some thought provoking conversation. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Sue Gallagher and I've been working in the nice local, gover local government and nonprofit space for about 30 years. Um, and I am so excited to be in this art making justice seeking space um, and really look forward to a rich conversation uh, with all of you. So welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so so tonight I'm gonna just read a Can little- Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so tonight we're going to be looking at access and equity, and I'm going to read a little paragraph that we've put together. Someone's video. Oh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I muted it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so access is the gateway to inclusion and participation. It hinders or enables an individual or group to live in equity. In theory, public institutions are inherently socially equitable and strongly reflect the entire community's concerns and needs to ensure that all have real access to opportunities. However, social equity in public institution is not always a given and must be actively instituted and maintained as needed and desired of the community in for the community to evolve. Institutions only open to a privileged or select few have a high social injustice quotient. Restricted societies impede opportunities that could be available to the entire group. This lens addresses how art functions as a tool to illuminate inequalities and create a space for the acquisition of access to all. 
So, you know, this is what we're going to be centering tonight's conversation, tonight's artwork on. And so just to, you know, talk a little bit about how I personally use art as a vehicle for access and, and, and equity. And um, one of the ways I do that is through What's Your Elephant? Um, what, you know, we talk about uh, different challenges that we have. Sometimes I partner with people like the YMCA, um, other organizations where we talk about whatever the challenges are. Sometimes they're focused on a particular um, challenge in the community or sometimes it's open for anyone to like kind of steer the conversation wherever it needs to go. Um, the other thing in, in reference to how I personally um, use art as a tool for access is um, a lot of my work, even though, you know, I do a lot of work in different um, scenarios, but a lot of times my work is centered in, you know, the community um, that, that are sometimes underserved. They're low income. Um, oftentimes those are communities of color. Oftentimes there are people who may not have access to go to an art show or to go to a workshop and different things like that. So whether I'm partnering or I'm offering my services as a gift to the community, um, I try to work with as many people as possible to try to put it out there. One of the ways is something like this, where we're coming together on Zoom, but this is also on Facebook Live as well. So if people wanted to join in from the, wherever they're at, if they're not here or look at this later, they can still uh, do that. And some of the ways where I feel um, there's some challenges with access because sometimes programs like these are underfunded or not funded at all. Sometimes programs like these are not exciting so people don't have access to get to those things. We don't have access to the community to, to, for the people who may need it the most. And so, so those are some of the challenges that I see sometimes because I've been in different scenarios where we may have these conversations but it's some high ticketed event that most people cannot afford to get to. So having things like this, where you have like the Community Foundation of Broward who is funding projects like this, having collaborations where you get to, where I get to connect with artists like Alana DaCosta and Sue Gallagher who does this work. And you know, whether you are talking to a couple of people, two, three, four people in, in, in your home, in your studio, in your little space, or whether you're talking to a hundred people, um, we need more of those type of um, programs that, that people could reach. And so those are some things that I see, and I'm gonna turn it over to Alana to talk about um, how she uses the arts, what's missing, and what's the per, you know perceived barrier. You're muted. <laughs> Hi, once again, my name is Alana of Creative Uprising, and I use art and also um, therapeutic practices and healing practices such as breath work and yoga and movement and song and poetry, any kind of expression that you can think of to really break down barriers and bring awareness to certain things that people, you know, are not really familiar with. A lot of times, you know, we live in our bubble and we're not aware that you know, there are a lot of marginalized groups that are kind of pushed to the side and there are a lot of issues that we're not aware of. And sometimes, or if not most times, art can, and, and creative art can be used as the honey. You know, when, when you give the medicine, you want to put a little honey on the medicine so you see here to swallow. So I use um, expressive art to kind of, you know, trigger different conversations and what I like about it is that it, it really pushes people to use self-inquiry and really look at how they can take action in their day-to-day -day life, like Mr. said, to um, stimulate conversation or to just simply address something. You know, a lot of times people don't know, you know, you know, what do I do? What can I do to help? And sometimes just being able to have a conversation or sometimes even just listening and giving someone a, a, a platform where they feel safe enough to share, um, especially if this person is in the position of being marginalized. So what I want to do, I want to quickly show a cartoon that can be very triggering to some people. Um, and it, it, I, I, I like it for different reasons, not necessarily of what they're saying, 
but because it's done in a cartoon and you would never see a cartoon that would address um, racial inequality in this manner. And it really, and even if you go and watch the video on your own and look back at, it, at the comments, it triggers a lot of, you know, thoughts. It triggers a lot of conversation. People look within themselves and, oh, I didn't know that that existed. So I'm going to share the video with you at this time. Like I said, um, we may not agree with everything, but I really want you to see what it triggers and what kind of thoughts um, that may, um, may, you may sense. Even I want you to recognize what you may feel in your body, you know, are there any, you know, certain tensions or stress or anxiety that you may feel in the body while, while watching it? And we'll talk about it a little bit later. So can I share? Uh, you if should I can. To. Yes, I can. So let me. All right. Let me just double check the sound. So I'm gonna let it play real quick and then just check the sound. Can you guys see it here? Okay, I think we get the point, right? 
So this video can be very triggering to some. It could be very affirming to some. And some may be like, what are they talking about? You know, we had a black president. Like, come on now, everyone has, you know, equal access, right? So I like that it's a cartoon. I like that it's, it is triggering and it's going to push some buttons and get some conversations going. So we can, instead of, you know, sweeping things, things under the rug, really bring it to the surface so we can, as a one people, a one nation, come up with some solutions. So thank you. That's Thank you, Alana. That was really powerful and, and actually a nice connection to, to some of the comments that I want to make. I think, you know, the video for me was hard to watch, um, to, to see how there were just so many structural injustices um, and harms and violence done uh, to Black people, Indigenous people, and people of color. Um, and I think, you know, for me, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a researcher, I'm a data person, I'm a geek, um, and and I guess I will claim my research as art, um, in in the sense that I hope to um, communicate to people um, some of the information, uh, not quite as creatively as uh, Alana has shared with us in the video, um, but I think when we we talk about why access isn't equitable, why people don't get connected to what they need. Um, there are very specific um, pieces of knowledge um, that my action is to bring those forward and share those with other people um, so that we kind of raise our awareness. And I teach a, um, a workshop with my colleague, uh, Michelle Higgs at the Children's Services Council. And um, let me just move this over here a little bit. We... Um, we talk about the, the history of these structural injustices right here in Broward County, in Fort Lauderdale, so that we can see, because many of us didn't grow up here, we didn't live here, we don't know what is the history of those inequities that make it difficult for people to get what they need to thrive. And so we share this one page history of, of inequities in the treatment of black and white people here in Broward County over the last hundred years and how Jim Crow really made the educational, healthcare, employment, uh, criminal justice experiences very inequitable and, and different. And this um, knowledge of history helps us really see where there are some solutions because history is about those patterns that are imprinted in our families, in our communities, in our bodies. Um, and so knowing that history um, can be an avenue for creating change. And so one of the action steps that, that I take in this work around access is to um, learn about and teach history um, so that we know what it can look like. I'm also really interested in the, the history and ongoing experience of redlining. Under Jim Crow, um, you know, uh, Black residents in, in Broward County were forced violently forced to live in particular neighborhoods and then those neighborhoods were under resourced they didn't get roads paved they didn't get street lights they didn't get health care access they didn't have opportunity to to get good jobs the, the schooling was often poor that was the experience of too many of the people in our community and this map just shows you um the history of of Jim Crow in Broward County, where you know we had a, a community down in Carver Ranches uh, that was created in 1940 by um, some white developers to bring black agricultural and domestic workers up to Broward. Northwest Fort Lauderdale uh, and into Lauder Hill was a quadrant that was that was created under Jim Crow, and then up in the North County Collier City and in in, um, in Deerfield and Pompano area, where again folks were segregated. This residential segregation lives on today in the form of it's illegal to segregate, but the conditions still create segregation. And so I think about access in terms of what's been the history and where are people still segregated by housing and how might we create some new conversations about um, solving this residential segregation issue, this community underinvestment issue. Um, and, and so being able to share those conversations with folks, I think is really important. 
The other thing that I do is, um, you know, I look at how people have talked about different ideas as ways to unveil some of our experiences. So when we think about access, there are really five A's, right? Can people afford what they need to thrive, whether it's a healthcare, education? Um, is the service that people need available when they can take it? A lot of people work two, three jobs and can't get to a service nine to five, right? And so what experiences um, might people have been having that we can share those stories with with decision makers to, to make changes and to change those hours? Um, are the things that people need close to them in a way that they can get to it, right? Do they have transportation? Uh, is it too far? Is it too hard? Too many bus routes? Um, and, and how can we have a conversation about how to make that easier and also more comfortable for folks? Um, and I think that's where some art um, can come in and making those waiting times or those waiting rooms um, more visually and culturally enticing and, and engaging and even healing. Um, and also thinking about, you know, I talked a little bit about accommodation and the hours and, and our services available in a language that's most comfortable for me when I'm in my most vulnerable state. Um, and then are the services of high quality, right? And do I um, experience a welcoming and a hospitality kind of thing? So so these ideas are things that I would hope might stimulate people's reflection on um, what um, access and equity mean um, and could mean, right? So how can we imagine each one of these A's uh, to be more equitable in our day-to-day -day lives, in our neighborhoods and, and in our communities? Um, and then just real quickly, you know, I think for me, when I think about how do we really get to equity and access, and we've got to start with people. We've got to start with your, your experiences, the stories that, that you've experienced, that someone else has experienced, that's come down through your family. Um, that's really powerful um, information to help us create equity and, and that we engage that in an empathetic, compassionate way. Um, that we recognize we have different identities and being able to, to see that data, whether, you know, by race or gender or, or age or, or disability. Um, and that, you know, we really come together in a way that honors each other. Um, because it's through that honoring of our unique gifts that we will create something magical and equitable. So, so those are some of the things that, that speak to me in terms of, you know, really being able to bring our full selves into co-creating equity and access together. Thank you, thank you. Gabe? Um, thank you so much for sharing that. That was uh, pretty powerful. Alana, you're right. I mean, that was a, um, a strong um, video to watch um, because we have seen that and continue to see it, which is a sad part, but I'm hopeful, you know, things eventually continue to change a little by little. Um, really, when I see it all that and I think about access, I think about how welcoming are um, we to not only the people, but also if we're representing an organization as an organization, if we are, we're doing a workshop, a workshop, if we're doing um, something in the community, an event, so how welcoming are we? How, how really are we looking at um, valuing, valuing the ideas of everyone sitting at the table? Um, it's well, um, been very well documented that teams that are diverse are, are higher producer, producers that others are not. Um, that when we just only continue to be surrounded and talking to people that think like us, um, we always think that we are right and everyone else is wrong. And, and even that sometimes we think that we're fighting for the right reason and we are not listening and not making sure that we try to keep the perspective of others or those that wanna be close to us um, and we're not valuing their point of view, um, thinking about even the, the, um, uh, the, the, the democracy. Uh, and that process and what that includes and how is that presented, it, it really um, questions how access can be um, presented. And, and I think, you know, part of this workshop is to really think about what can I do as a person, as a professional, um, when I know about access and I hear those powerful thoughts and that data. And yes, um, so that 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 is absolutely your your art. I've known you for many years, and you're so passionate um, about it, and you're always 
and making sure that we communicate with the right numbers, right? So that we know exactly how we can uh, continue to move. But really is uh, um, how do we, when we think about access, what does it mean um, when we think about also equality and equity? Um, and how do we show up really thinking about, uh, are we inclusive? Because we, we, we could take the risk sometimes that um, to think that we are, but we are only seeing, hearing, and being with people like think like us and, and not letting anyone else, even those that may have the need or want to participate, want to learn um, because may, concepts may be new to them. Um, and how do we make sure that we always, even that it's hard sometimes to continue to be inclusive um, of others. So I, I think that um, it's a lot to think about and see how we can, we can really look into access and see what I can do as a person, as a professional in any environment I am in. Thank you, thank you. And Alana is going to lead us into some centering breath work. Yes, but before I do, I wanted to open up the floor. You know, we've been talking a lot. So if there's anyone that is here that is um, an artist or a community member or just any, just a human being and wants to share, you know, how they feel about what they saw or what has been said so far, please now is the time. Feel free to. Um, raise your hand and you can be unmuted or unmute yourself and share. Okay. Well, sharing is a part of the process. So if you're not um, willing or able to share your words at this time, hopefully you'll be able to share some breath with me. And before we do that, I want us to look at our access checklist. So for each lens that we focus on for the workshop there will be a checklist that i want you to kind of when we are feeling our breath i want you to really think of an experience or either that you've had or that you witnessed and then i want you to mentally go down the list and ask yourself and reflect on what your experience may have been or what you have may have witnessed so let me go ahead and Alrighty, that's not the one. Hey, there we go. So before you close your eyes, I just want you to uncross your legs if they're crossed, relax your arms, place your hands on your knees. You can either have your palms facing up or down, whatever feels comfortable. And just simply relax the shoulders away from the ears. And I want you to just notice the breath. Notice where it lands when you inhale. Notice how deep the breath goes, flows to the bottom. Just observe without judgment, without expectation. And I want you to think of an experience that you either had for yourself or a scene for someone else. And just take a mental checklist of that experience. Were the values welcoming? Was it inclusive to all people? Was there an openness to ideas and opinions of others? Were you seen as an equal participant? So 
the value for diverse expression. For a democratic process, for a union of society and community. Experience value cooperation. It values community. And finally, was the experience responsive to all people? <laughs> and when you're ready, if you can say, go ahead and close it. Take a deep breath in, through your nose, and exhale, making an audible sound, releasing the shoulders away. On the next inhale, try to extend the breath for at least four times, knowing that the breath is a reflection of the life you choose to Exhale. And to me to be extending the exhale. Standing the same knowing that the breath is a reflection of the Knowing that at any time that you may feel triggered or annoyed or angry or sad or uncomfortable, you always have your Tap your feet on the floor, you wiggle your fingers, reminding you to always be grounded in truth, reminding you to always be protected in truth. Ready? Shoulders back, rolling eyes, and
I apologize if you can hear me. I hope this all your message is. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, thank you for that, Alana. I feel like so calm right now. <laughs> You're welcome. So let me get this here. Um, okay, so we're gonna be moving into the art making portion of this workshop. And I'm just gonna put a couple of things down here first. So um, this is a series. This is the first of the events. I'm gonna post in the chat now um if you're on zoom it'll be there's a link that i'm going to post in the chat where you could go to the website on what's your elephant.org slash the art of justice and it's gonna you know you, it's going to be updated as soon as we get you know rsvp links it's going to give you different dates if there's any changes so that is something to um hold on to um if you're watching this on facebook it is in the in in the post there's a link for that also, before I, so to make sure that I have that in, we do have a questionnaire. So after we finish, um, I ask you all to please, please, please click on the link and fill out the questionnaire. Uh, this helps us to prepare for the next workshop. This helps us to uh, provide feedback to Community Foundation so they understand that this is something that the community wants, it's important, and you know your feedback is always going to help us to prepare um for future um workshops so that is something that i will ask you all to do and so uh this time we're going to make we're going to be focusing on creating some collage work um it could also be word art so each time we have this workshop there will be a different type of art we have a poet that's going to be doing a workshop and he's going to be um, doing a workshop on how to create, you know, express yourself through poetry. So there's no poetry um, experiences needed to participate. So, you know, please, everyone who's on the call, who's watching this um, live, who's going to watch this on a replay, I invite you all to keep uh, the website handy so you can look back and come back because each workshop will be a different focus. Each workshop will have a different artist and each workshop will have a different type of art. So I sent out an email so everyone has, you know, preparation. So some of the things that I do in What's Your Elephant or like Alana and I, we are also part of Artists for Black Lives Matter, where people are creating art pieces um, that they could use. And, you know, um, it doesn't have to be um, anything that, it, that you feel like, oh, this is a piece of art that I'm going to put in the gallery. But even though when we show that work is very powerful and impactful, um, when it's seen together. So I'm just showing, let me take, I'm gonna have to take off the virtual background just to show really briefly um, some of the supplies that I have. So, you know, the, and some samples. So this is something like, let's say this, right? This is just a simple printer paper. Most people have a printer in their home or some, uh, you know, scratch paper, any type of, it, does, it could be blank, it could be lines, um, but you could use this and just have words, you know, and this is color, this is marker, this is crayon. Uh, these are also some other examples. So it could, you could focus on a type one word that you want to like really focus that attention on and you could have multiple words. And so collaging, basically, most people know what that is. We're going to be taking magazines. You're going to be cutting out magazines to repurpose, finding, you know, things that are already existent and creating a piece of uh, art around it. So I have uh, magazines. I have um, glue, um, scissors. If you don't have scissors, you could always hand rip. It doesn't have to, like at Lana's screen, and she's showing some of her things. So I just want to give you guys an example of how you could, it doesn't have to be something drawn. You could use words and you could add color and patterns to make it decorative. Uh, the other thing that I would say is that 
if you are creating a piece of um, art today, um, the, the hope is that you would take a picture of that and email it to us because the next event will be the virtual showcase. And so we wanna show what the community came up with as well as some other art, um, submitted art. So there is a call for artists that a link that's on the post as well. So if you are a visual artist um, or performance artist that has something, uh, definitely feel free and we'll be showcasing this at a later date. So we're gonna give a little time for people to kind of work on whatever that piece is. Um, I'm gonna play a little music. Um, and then towards once, like kind of midway, we're gonna start having a discussion. So the purpose of this is to create a piece of art, but it's also a start to a conversation. So everyone is gonna have a chance to talk a little bit about what they're working on. Um, you don't have to, we have a very short period of time together. So if you don't finish it tonight, that's fine. Um, just have a start on this. Um, I would need the I th uh, the um, the work back by the 29th because I think the 30th is the day that we're going to do the virtual showcase. So if you feel like, hey, I'm going to start something, I'm inspired, but I can't finish it, that's totally fine. And when we share, so in creating safe spaces, um, what is safety? What is being seen? What is being heard? What is being understood? Um, Gabe talked a lot about... Um, uh, are people welcome and invited? Also, Sue talked about this. When people are in certain spaces, um, are they welcoming and having, you know, even if you have a different idea and a different opinion? So, when we're given these safe spaces for people to share, ah, let's just lie in here, sorry. When we're given these safe spaces to share, consider that, you know, people may share something that for someone else it might be triggering, it might be something that they don't agree to. Um, this is not meant to have us agree on everything that we share and express. This is us sharing, having a space to um, express something we've experienced, to express something that we see as a challenge, to express something that we're gonna take as an action item to see like, okay, what can I do today that can move the dial forward in access and equity and social justice overall um, in your community, in your workplace, um, in your families? You know, a lot of this information starts at home, you know, um, so what can you do? There's different things that you could share. So I'm going to, you know, play a little music. We're going to get a little bit of time. I think, let me see what time are we at right now. Um, we're good for time. Oh, we're good for time. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to start the, the work and you have a little bit of time to work on the piece. We're going to play a little music. If it's too loud, let me know and I'll turn it down. And, um, and then we're gonna you know, continue uh, the conversation um, with you know, sharing your work and the feedback from what we have here. And um, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna play a little Also I wanted to share, feel free to use other media as well. So I'm gonna be using some watercolor. So if you have paint or like Nikki said, crayons or color pencils, really tap into your inner child you know, like I said, the, the creative part is the honey. It's the ability to kind of, um, you know, you know, make a serious inform, make a serious topic or a topic that is kind of uncomfortable. You know, make it a little bit more pal not palatable for not only yourself but for others. Um, so really, um, tap into that inner child and you know, know that there is no wrong or right um, expression. There is a beautiful expression in you. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's I'm gonna play a little music, a little fella, which seems appropriate. <laughs> Thank you. 
So just want a heads up, um, I think in about like close to eight o'clock, we're going to start giving people space to start the discussion. We could still work on it, but um, what we're working on, but uh, we'll start back up the discussion around then. Thank you. 
So I did say eight o'clock, but I realized we had the program for 8.30, but the flyer said eight. So we're gonna to try to honor that as much as possible. So um, we could continue working, but I want to see if anybody wants to um, start the conversation to share their piece. And um, it's a pretty simple format. We'll show the work. We'll talk a little bit about what that work means and if anyone has feedback or comments or questions, or sometimes someone has an answer or solution to something that is brought up or gets an idea, you know, everyone have a chance to talk and then we could go around that way. So anybody uh, ready to dive in? Oh, okay, well, I'll share what I'm working on right here. It's not finished, but I don't know. This is one of the first things that I saw in the magazine, um, which is a cannabis leaf and a tincture of some sort. And I, you know, thinking about access and certain barriers that we're dealing with now, um, you know, you know, you still have a lot of people, even including some of my family members, that are incarcerated or on probation because of um, cannabis. However, this is something now that is openly traded, you know, on stock um, and you have a lot of big corporations. So that's who I have this um, um, Caucasian man representing, you know, big corporations and the man, so to say, um, but that's, you know, it could be any person, the ideology is what I wanted to really, um, 
kind of point out and that we're battling or people are battling for this commodity, you know, it, it changes through the time. At one point it was human beings, you know, then it could be, you know, cotton or you could think of labor or you can think of liquor and now it's cannabis. So there's many different things that we um, have taken from nature and that's why I have this here. Or we've taken from, we've separated out of, you know, extracted out of nature to make profit. Um, meanwhile, you have some people who, you know, benefit from it and some people like this man right here behind bars, you know, you know, punished for it. So I'm still working on this piece. Um, not only are we battling for different commodities and things that we want to profit for in this capitalist society, we're also battling for life and trying to define what that means for each of us, each of us. So that's what I want to share so far. Um, that's it. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and share my, I don't know if you can see it. Um, I used um, pencils. Let's see if I can get this to view correctly. Okay, there we go. So, you know, as a system um, leader and someone who designs how things happen, I, I wanted to start with the truth that if one part of us suffers, all the parts suffer with us. Because I think there's a real profound lack of um, empathy and understanding that if people in our community are hurting, we're hurting too, right? And, and that, you know, we've sort of been um, desensitized to, to the reality of other people's hurting. And so um, I wanted to meet this reality with these vibrations, knowing that we are interconnected, being fully present, practicing hospitality, valuing differences, committing to the well-being of all and each, right? That, that these vibrations can then grow a field of healing and restoration and regeneration. Um, so healing, restoring, and regenerating our collective body together to grow new life. And that's what the flowers are on the top. Mm. So that's what I did. Really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, let me let me go next. I don't know if you can see this. Well, oh my goodness. You might have to turn off your virtual screen. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, there we go. So the video we watch, it's hard to see, but there are like people, um, and you're looking at your screen uh, the other way, this way. Mm -hmm. Here, here, and they're all in different places. Um, when I saw the video, I remember when I became a foster dad, I used to say that the kids in foster care, um, they started behind the line. So all the kids that are from more affluent communities or families, the kids, you know, there is a saying that said the kids are, um, are born with a thousand possibilities ahead of them. And the, my experience with foster care, I used to say, these kids need help because they are being born, you're behind, behind the line, behind the starting line. And it will take some time to even get to the line when the other ones are already running um, far. So it, it really is about a sure um, journey um, to kind of like um, the light here, which would be like, um, the goal is to, to be bright at the end, but along the journey, all you have to do is answer questions all the time. So that all you see, and sometimes life is upside down, so are, so are the questions. But the questions are still there. You still have to answer them. And that's what it will get you um, moving forward to the light um, together. And it has access, all kind of letters on, on the edge because that's the theme of the day. Nice, nice. Thank you. And I just want to share really quickly because um, if people have feedback or anything that comes up for them, please feel free to jump in and share. 
Um, we have, um, because we are live on Facebook, we do have some people on Facebook and we have Natalie um, made a comment for Alana. She said, very true, Alana. I love your take on the cannabis industry and how it, it's openly traded on the stock market, yet, the, yet there are folks incarcerated for the same thing, just wow. So I just wanted to share that um, from online. Thank you so much. And if you're watching online, you can participate. Uh, so because the showcase will be virtual, so you just need to get that piece to me um, electronically uh, by July 29th um, to be included in the virtual showcase. So anyone else ready? Uh, You're muted. We still don't hear you. I don't know. Um... <clears throat> oh, it went off again. <laughs> I hear something, but I don't hear when you're talking. Hmm. Do you wanna to try to figure out the sound and come back? Um, oh, okay, my bad, I'll do something. Mm. <laughs> well, you want to do you want to show your piece and maybe you could type a little bit? Um, okay. <coughs> it's my ability that defines me. Well, if you type it in the chat, if you can't get the sound, if you type it in the chat, I could read it or someone could read it out. There are topics about being and staying connected. Yeah. Elderly. Disabilities. Anti-discrimination. stigmas, affordable housing, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, connection is definitely important. And I think it also helps us with empathy because sometimes some of the issues is if it doesn't apply to us, we can't connect and we can't uh, show empathy for others, um, which can be very dangerous and um, is, uh, doesn't allow us to um, work on that, that difference between equality and equity where some people might need more or just to be human to another person. So uh, thank you. Let me see. Well, I'll share mine. Let me, I have to go off the, my virtual background. 
So the piece, the piece that I created, um, let's see here. Uh, this says, I need help. And it has access where it's broken. We are not safe, potential mom need to change. So one of the things that um, when Sue was talking about, you know, access and people getting help and if they're feeling welcomed and are they safe. Um, and then also one of the workshops that I attended um, with Sue in there made me think of it when you talk about access. And so I wanted to, sh it just kind of came up for me an experience that one of my family members um, experienced. Uh, she's a mother and she was having a lot of, she, she suffers from depression. And so for a long time, I was trying to, you know, push her to um, get counseling, get help. And so finally, she decides to look up some services and go to, um, to get that help that she needs. And because she's a mother and because the place that she went to, um, what she was, uh, what happened is that when she was honestly sharing some of the struggles she went through because she was a mom now she's facing all these investigations they wanted because she shared she shared at the time that there was a moment where she felt suicidal not that she was currently suicidal but she was sharing what was real for her to get the help that she need but because she's a parent a mother she's low income she's at this place um, they ended up now she has a court date and all these things and investigation and she didn't get the access that she needs. And so now someone that needed help who went into the system to get the help that she need, um, not only did not get the help, um, but now she's facing all these other things just because she was trying to get access to help, you know, affordable or free or low income uh, mental health counseling that would help her and potentially help her children, her family, everyone that she has. So when we talk about access, sometimes we have institutions that have the access, but we're not safe. People are not safe when they're low income. People are not safe when they look different. People are not safe when they have a disability. Um, people are not safe if they are, you know, LGBTQ. Um, so these are things that, you know, in terms of institutions and in terms of, you know, some things that we may take for granted because, you know, most people, if they could afford to get a counselor, they don't have to go through this thing. They could just get a counselor or not. But if people who are low income go into the system and, you know, th these are some of the barriers that they face. So. so I'll open it up for any comments or the next person to share. So I see Thaddeus and Mark. I don't know if you all had made um, a piece of art. Let me see, hold on a second. I wanted to thank everyone who shared so far. It's um, sometimes, like I said, you know, bringing awareness to uncomfortable issues is not easy task and there are ways of taking action steps. So we're gonna wrap up, but I really want us to think about what next, what can you do in your home first and then in your community. And what I suggest to you is think about at least one or two areas um, that are greatly impacting your community your family or you directly and see what you can do to either bring awareness to those things or, um, you know, just to, 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 to have conversations around it. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, there are many ways to take action. It doesn't have to be, you know, going for a protest. It doesn't have to be, you know, boycotting. There are many things that you can do um, you don't have to sit on the sidelines. You can um, use your voice in any which way. You know, everyone counts. 
um, in order to make true social change, we have to all pitch in and take responsibility for our actions first, knowing that we can be an example to other people to um, step up and tap in and take action as well. So if, if there's no one else I want to share, and I know Mickey shared the participant questionnaire again in the chat, please, please, please um, participate and do the questionnaire. If you are interested in sharing your piece so we can um, show it for the showcase, then please email, uh, take a picture of your work, email it, send it back to Mickey, and we'll be sure to include it. Also, if you're a performing artist and say you want to share a piece that you either pre-recorded or you want to do something, please go ahead and, and feel free to check in with us and see how you can participate. Now, the series will run until January of next year. Um, the next um, thing that we have that Nikki shared with you is the call for artists. So also for the showcase, even if you didn't participate, this um, in this workshop, or if you're catching it on the rerun, right, please feel free to submit artwork that you feel that may be relatable to access and equity, um, and we can showcase it for the next event. Is there anything I'm missing, Mr. Nikki? Well, I would say that whether you're in the Zoom call or watching on Facebook, um, even if you if you did not, you know, the we were running to use the art to talk about these. Um, uh, social justice points. However, um, whether you participate in the workshop or you're just listening, please um, can't stress enough to click on the questionnaire and fill out the um, fill out the form for us. Um, that would be really helpful. Um, it doesn't matter if you did the art piece or not. Of course, if you did the art piece, we would love to have it in the virtual showcase. But even you know, just what was your take on tonight's workshop? Um, what did what what did you take from it? Um, what did you like about it? Um, what are some things you feel that could be improved upon? Where are you from? What zip code? You know, different things like that. So it's a few questions, and it will help us greatly. And I think that's it. I don't know, Gabe, if you or Sue or anyone has anything to add to. And actually, thank you very much for everyone that participated. Um, this is the first of four. Um, it is important for all of us to, to share and continue to make sure that people hear and participate on the Community Foundation of Broward through the Arab community are the funders and they are trying to do good um, in the community, trying to get the community together and, and offer avenues for local artists to really impact social justice. So this is a wonderful opportunity and that we all are participating in and I, I really would like to I have more people and, and share with more people because it's, it's valuable. And, and we need to use this platform to continue to heal, continue to gather, continue to hear each other um, and value each other just for being. So thank you so much for participating. Thank you, everyone. Yes, so thank you, thank you all. We're gonna wrap up and um, like we said, we have the virtual showcase, uh, the virtual, um, Showcase. So the Y is being built. So by the time this series, before the series end, um, we will have some in-person workshops, hopefully, but definitely the culminating event. So if you participated on one or more of the workshops, if you're watching this later and you say, hey, I want to create a piece of art, you still have a lot of time to be a part of it virtually, as well as a part of the actual um, physical in-person a showcase which will be in um, the Cistrunk community in downtown Fort Lauderdale. So if you are in Broward County or in South Florida, if you want to mail something in to be a part of the actual um, culminating event, there is still time. Uh, thank you all for participating. Thank you all for listening. Uh, thanks so much for uh, Sue and Gabe and Alana to, um, to contribute to this conversation and everyone who um, participated tonight. Uh, thank you and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Have a good night.